You are what happens to you. Alan Watts Greetings mortals, and a capital day to you all. Broadcasting to you from across the globe. I'm your host Simon, welcome back to the Library of Gnosis. The original script for this was actually written back many years ago when I was trying to disprove that free will existed. So it will be fun to counterpoint myself after evolving my viewpoint. This concept of being yourself is based on a myriad of underlying implications. This idea of being a self that has a will separate from what you call external, not you or other, is a part of this illusion. You can actually have the center drop out of you. There is a phenomenon known as ego death, described as a quote, complete loss of subjective self-identity, end quote. In Jungian psychology, the synonymous term psychic death is used, which refers to a fundamental transformation of the psyche. It results in the profound experience that although one is not unconscious, there is no longer an I experiencing current sensory input. There is just the input as it is and by itself. You see through the illusion of a separate, personal self inside an external world that is other than you, but as autonomous with the external world, acting as one. From a human, incarnated perspective, you did not choose who your parents were gonna be. You did not pick in what country you were born. You did not decide your body, your gender, nor your ethnicity. Basically everything that makes up what you call yourself, you had no will in. You do not even know what your next thought will be. You see, you do not create your thoughts. Thoughts simply arise in your head. You do not know what your next thought will be any more than you know what my next thought will be. I would like to demonstrate this to you with a thought experiment from Sam Harris. Think of a city, any city in the world. Now this is as free a choice that you will ever face. Did you think of Toronto? Most likely not, but you are aware that Toronto is a city. Yet it did not enter your mind at this time. Maybe you thought of 5 cities, maybe of 10 depending on how long you contemplated the question. But you did not think of every city you knew of, only a select few came to mind. Now were you free to choose those cities which did not occur to you to think of? You do not know what your next thought will be, it will simply come to you. Your thoughts arise in your head without your conscious intention. I challenge you to stop thinking for an hour or a day. If you really did have free will and control over your own mind, this would seemingly not be a problem. But you will find this next to impossible for the simple reason that the control you feel you have is to an extent simply an illusion. We appear to be living in a cause and effect universe. Either our wills are determined by prior causes, an infinitely long chain of prior causes and we're not responsible for them, or they are the product of chance and we are not responsible for them. The apparent random nature of the universe may play a part into it, but even when adding a random element we do not come out with free will. At best we are then just machines with a random number generator in the background. The third option, that there is some combination of chance and determinism. But whichever way you shake the 8 ball, you do not come up with free will. No single object in nature appears to have this mystical thing called free will. Atoms do not have free will, so how can all of them put together change this fact? We appear to be living in a cause and effect universe, and there is no reason to think that humans would be any different, according to materialists. But of course, I am not a materialist. 
To better understand where I'm coming from, I advise you to first go watch my video on time if you haven't. Link up top. Your will precedes time, which is a strange phenomenon. It means that your actions do not originate from even this third dimensional plane of existence, but above it. Most likely fifth density. And I guess it all eventually goes back to the source, if you follow the red line. Free will is really a paradox, but such is also the nature of God. All is mind, the universe is mental. Hermetic principle number one. Your mind creates time, and as such, a part of your mind is above time. A sane way of thinking about this is that it all happens at once, simultaneously. You do not sight see, you either see or you sight. When releasing an arrow, you cannot aim and then release. It must all happen in one motion. Such is the nature of will. Free will is doing gladly and freely that which one must do. Call young. Scientists are looking for a consciousness inside our brain, but even when they just tried locating where our memories reside in the brain, scientists fail to do so. Which leads us to believe that consciousness is not restricted to just the inside of your skull. Free will or destiny? Well, from my understanding, synchronicity is an organizing principle. My comprehension of destiny is that for instance, you are going to walk through a certain path. Your free will is choosing whether to run, walk or crawl through the path. When it comes to free will, take the example of Charles Whitman that Sam Harris brings up. An American engineering student at the University of Texas, former US Marine and mass murderer who killed 16 people, including his mother and wife. Charles wrote in his journal how he had uncontrollable urges to do harm to others. Whitman wrote that he requested an autopsy to be conducted upon his body to determine if there was a biological reason for his actions. Later at Whitman's autopsy, the coroner discovered a brain tumor. Forensic investigators have theorized that the tumor may have been pressed against the nearby amygdala region of Whitman's brain affecting his fight or flight response, possibly being the cause for his decision to commit the murders. After reading the fact that this mass murderer had a brain tumor, this man is no longer seen as a monster who did this of his own accord, but as an unlucky victim. If someone has a terrible childhood and the wrong brain chemistry, he could just as well become a mass murderer too. But the child that is later to become a mass murderer cannot be made responsible for his bad childhood, nor his brain chemistry. You do not know where your decisions come from. They pop up like hiccups. And when you make a decision, people have a great deal of anxiety about making decisions. Did I think this over long enough? Did I take enough data into consideration? And if you think it through, you find you never could take enough data into consideration. The data for a decision in any given situation is infinite. So what you do is, you go through the motions of thinking out what you will do about this. But warriors are people who think of all the variables beyond their control and what might happen. Choice is the act of hesitation that we make before making a decision. It is a mental wobbling. And so we are always in a dither of doubt as to whether we are behaving the right way, doing the right thing, and so on and so forth, and lack a certain kind of self-confidence. And if you see you lack self-confidence, you will make mistakes through sheer fumbling. If you do have self-confidence, you may carry, get away with doing entirely the wrong thing. You have to regard yourself as a cloud in the flesh. 
Because you see, clouds never make mistakes. Did you ever see a cloud that was misshapen? Did you ever see a badly designed wave? <laughs> no, they always do the right thing. But if you will treat yourself for a while as a cloud or wave and realize that you can't make a mistake, whatever you do, because even if you do something that seems to be totally disastrous, it'll all come out in the wash somehow or other. Then, through this capacity, you will develop a kind of confidence. And through confidence, you will be able to trust your own intuition. But this is the middle way of knowing it has nothing to do with your decision to do this or not. Whether you decide that uh, you can't make a mistake or whether you don't decide it, it's true anyway. That you are like cloud and water. And through the, that realization, without overcompensating in the other direction, you will come to the point where you begin to be on good terms with your own being and to be able to trust your own brain. Like Walt Whitman said, I envy animals because animals are practical. Animals don't lie awake at night, weeping for their sins. Because if you have done something wrong and you've made a mistake, and somebody makes you ashamed of it and guilty, you run around licking the sores of your wounded ego because you feel your pride has been hurt. The first thing to understand is that it is not a serious failing in a human being to make mistakes. Everybody has to make mistakes, there is no way out of it. You can't learn anything unless you make mistakes. Alan Watts There is a famous neuro psychological experiment by Benjamin Libet and his colleagues that has been interpreted as showing that our brains initiate voluntary movements before we are aware of having decided to move, and that this calls into question the efficiency of our wills. Now some background to this. In the 1960s it was discovered that before people make a voluntary movement, there is a slow buildup of electric potential measured from the skull over the motor cortex, being as much as a second earlier for simple movements, and even longer for complex series of movements. This electrical change is called the readiness potential, and was discovered by Kornhuber and Dickey in 1965. The bet hooked test subjects up with electrodes to their scalps and then connected them to an EEG machine. Libet then asked them to perform a simple hand movement, in most cases, a flexing of the finger or wrist. Libet was interested in the relative timing of the readiness potential compared with the movement and the conscious decision to move. To determine when subjects felt the intention to move, he asked them to wash the second hand of a clock. After making a movement, the volunteer reported the time on the clock when they first felt the conscious intention to move. Libet found that the unconscious brain activity of the readiness potential leading up to the subject's movement began approximately half a second before the subject was aware of a conscious intention to move. In some cases, this readiness potential was found to be up to as much as 5 seconds in advance. It makes you wonder how much control we really have. We for sure don't have total free will. That would be the perspective of God, because then you would be free to do anything. But we have limited free will, based on our circumstances and our destiny. Our lives are also determined by the planets, hence why we have the science of astrology. The Hermetics saw it as their job to break free from the habits and influence of the planets, and become masters over their own destinies. The masses of people are carried along, obedient to environment, the wills and desires of others stronger than themselves, heredity, suggestion, and other outward causes moving them about like pawns on the chessboard of life. But the masters, rising to the plane above, dominate their moods, characters, qualities and powers, as well as the environment surrounding them, and become movers instead of pawns, the Kabbalion. 
I will end by a quote from Alan Watts' book, The Way of Zen. We feel that our actions are voluntary when they follow a decision and involuntary when they happen without decision. But if a decision itself were voluntary, every decision would have to be preceded by a decision to decide. An infinite regression which, fortunately, does not occur. Oddly enough, if we had to decide to decide, we would not be free to decide. Alan Watts Until next time, stay safe out there mortals, and try not to do anything stupid. If you can. Thanks for listening. See you next time, mortal. You can also find me on Odyssey, Rumble, and BitChute. If you want to follow me on any social media, I have Facebook and a Twitter page. The audio versions of my broadcasts are also available as a podcast. Just search for Library of Gnosis on your podcast provider of choice. I produce everything myself, from research, writing, narration, and editing. All my work is available for free, and I'd like my work to remain as free and open as possible to the masses. But due to the need for advertisers, I will forever be bound to self-censorship. I bet you've learned more from some of my 20 minute videos than you have from a 2.5 hour Hollywood blockbuster movie. And in total I have produced many hours of content. If you have money to spare and want to help me be able to express myself more freely, do consider donating to me to help out, either monthly on Patreon or a one-time donation at PayPal. You can find links in the description to everything. The amazing song in the background is Waiting for the Sun by D. Van, sung by my friend Greger Andersson. You can find them on Spotify and Instagram. Links. Also in the description. Waiting for the sun. Waiting for the sun. Waiting for the sun.